Welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. This morning I'm going to minister on the need to win souls for Christ. Amen. Let me all know we need to get busy. Amen. I said we need to get busy. Now, you know, the Bible speaks of a great falling away. Church, we ain't had the great gathering up yet. I said, we haven't had the great gathering up yet. You know, we need to push in and, and hold on. And, and we got to come to that place to understand we called by the Father. What's my qualifications? Called by the Father. What's your qualifications? Called by the Father. You know, that's what we ought to do. That's what the, the position we ought to take is that we didn't call ourselves. He called us, can you say amen, to, to win souls in the kingdom slash church, you know. And then and only then, come on, will we be about our Father's business. There's lots of things that we think, uh, and I believe building hospitals is good. I believe building orphanages. I believe all that stuff's good. But let me tell you what's more important than that, and that's winning souls. You can heal somebody and still send them to hell. You can train somebody, give them a great education. They'll be lost and undone. Come on. You know, we, we, we got some people say, that's not my thing. Well, I understand that. I understand what you're saying. Not everybody's going to go to the mission field. Not everybody's going to talk to somebody about Jesus. But you know what you can do? You can find your place and get in it and get started. You can find whatever it is. Well, you know, I just like giving, uh, cutting out, giving little flowers to them. Well, cut your flowers out and give it to them. You know, we can reach people. Love what reaches people. People interpret love. Can, can you say amen? Lots of times that's what a, a lot of problems in marriage is, is the failure to interpret the love of the other person. You see, you got a person that's married, a touchy-feely person, need to be told every day. Well, if you marry somebody like me, <laughs> you better interpret <laughs> You better get say, well, you express love. I do pretty good, but let me tell you, after a while, she better know I love her. Today we ain't having a good day. And what she knows about me gonna get her through, brother. Because she knows I love her, amen. But, you know, but what what am I telling you? Some people can interpret that in the natural. People see that and said, Well, he works hard, so he must love his family. He's always home, he must love his family. He 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 doesn't go to the bars and the dives, he must love his family. You know, we interpret that. Can you say amen? The world can interpret your love. If you'll take it there, you don't have to go out in the mission field. You don't have to beat bushes, but you can be supportive. You can smile. You can say, Jesus is Lord. And when people say, how do you do that? Say, Jesus is my source. You know, you don't have to get into big things. I want to know about a source. Somebody needs to know. Some people don't need about healing. They need a source to get through the day. When we can't have healing, the other person needs healing. Amen. So I understand that. And I understand what you're saying. But there's places you can get in. You can love people. You can pray for people. Come on. They didn't, God didn't call us to straighten the world up. He called us to be straight in a perverse world. It's a difference. Can you say amen? I understand what you're saying. But, but what we need to do is get on a soul winning team and believe that God's going to do something. Amen. Now, I tell you, that, I'm excited about that count of them souls. Let's give God a big glory for them Oh, I know some people about evangelism. Well, you know, not every one of them, but let me tell you, I'm not talking about every one of them. I'm talking about the the one of them. I'm talking about the the one of them that's getting stuff done, the the one of them that had a heart change. Can you say me? That's what I'm talking about. You know, we, we find an excuse, you know. You know, you know, it's just like when you deal with people. You know, some people, uh, they just like other things. But some people can haul a lot, but they like wheelbarrows. You've got to push them everywhere to go. Well, I'm willing to push, amen, if, you, if you're willing. Can somebody say, you know, and, and some, some people like canoes. You know, they easily turned over. But they easily paddled. You see, everybody has their own place. Everybody has their own thing. And, you, you know, and, and some people like kites. They, they'll get up on you and they, they can scot with you. Ain't careful you don't hold a string on them, they'll fly away. How I many you know that? Amen. <laughs> see, God uses all kinds of... A temperament uses all kind of people if they will. You know, I mean, you know, man is in sin and he's guilty. Now, there's no doubt that people need salvation. There's no doubt that people need Jesus. And there is no other name in which a man can be saved. 
other than the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? I, mean, I, I just feel warm chill going up my neck to tell you that Jesus is Lord. He shall be Lord from here on out. Come on, somebody. Give God glory. We serve the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Amen. You know, what we got to understand is God wants to use us as a world perishing. Romans uh, 3 and 23 says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, some people, you know what, some people don't get involved in missions, don't get involved in, in speaking to, because you're a sinner. Well, I'm a sinner too. You know, I, I tell you, w wouldn't it be something if our life was put on view every Sunday before the church people? Hmm. I told Brother Micah that one day, you know what I told him? I said, I was having a good day Wednesday. Wednesday's the good day to check on me. Tuesday wasn't that great. Thursday, I was fading a little bit. Friday, I got back online. With Saturday, I got excited. And Sunday, I come to see y'all. Amen. But, you know, Amplified says it this way. Since all has sinned, and I love this translation, have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God. You know what he's saying? He, he's saying people do, but he, he, he knows all about your situation, where you're at. He said, people's in sin. He said, people fall. People fail. There's people out there needing Jesus. Can you say amen? How I many of y'all know he's still married to the backslider? Hey, amen. I said he's still married to the backslider. That means they go back, do what they want to, but there's no letter of divorcement been made. Can somebody say amen? Amen. You know, the Word of God said they all go on the side to sin. Said he looked and didn't find any good. How I many of y'all know that? I mean, if he, the Word of God tells us that, that he looked and found none good upon the earth. So if you're waiting to get good, you're just not going to do it. If you're waiting to change <laughs> into something that is unrecognizable as you, let's go ahead and use the person that would be recognized, and we'll go ahead and keep you. Let's let our, let our light shine, but let us change. Let us look and know that the world is perishing. And just because we have problems, it does not eliminate us from the call of telling people about Jesus. Yeah. See, that's what the devil wants to do. Well, you know, if you do that. No, no, no. Just talk about him. Lift him up. Can somebody say amen? And if he be lifted up, he'll do what? He'll draw all men unto him. So if you don't lift him up, he will not be drawing men. All kinds. You know, the you know, book of Acts, they was, I mean, y'all know the book of Acts, they's on fire down there. Them babies tried to get, they tried to turn the world straight up. They turned it upside down, but, but it was really when they flipped it right side up, it messed people up, amen. Thousands of people were born in. Thousands. Isn't those good numbers to hear, amen? You know, the church was a soul-winning ch church. Their chief mission was to, send, was to win souls. What is our chief mission? Get a, get a uh, chili bake-off, I mean, cook-off. I guess you bake off a cake and cook off a chili. <laughs> you know, some people have aspired, you know, to those things. You know, what we really need to do and understand where we are, God can use me no matter where I'm at. Come on. Now, should our witness be? Yes, we should have a witness. Paul warned them uh, in, in Thessalonians, I believe, he warned them and told them that their experience with people outside be better than in the church. He said, those that lay out. He said, it'd be no, no. He said well, they're learning something down there. We, we, see, we come to church. We found out. I don't know if y'all did. I found out not very many people are perfect in the church. And you know, brother, buddy, when I got that revelation, I fit in. I found a place to get in. I found a place where I could live. Can you say Amen. That when I found out that God uses imperfect people and read, come on, amen. I got excited about that, amen. I mean, I don't know that, that, like it or not, we've been sent <laughs> as kingdom representatives. We've been sent as church representatives. We've been sent, like it or not. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you what, and I'm going to be honest with you. And sometimes you can probably understand. My mother would wake me up, but I did not want to go to school. <laughs> But, you know, I found out in life kids need to go to school, amen. And when I wake my little kids up, send them to school, I don't tell them I didn't want to go like you. <laughs> I tell them I went. You got to go too, amen. 
So what am I saying? You know, in our experience sometimes, we really do not see the need or the importance of it. You know, in Matthew 28 and 18, it said, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and in earth <laughs> has been handed over to me. How many of y'all know Jesus has all the power? Now, who are we working for? Jesus. Well, whose body is it? Jesus. Who sent us on the mission? Jesus. Who, who wants us to be busy? Jesus. He said, it's all me. He said, anything in the heavenlies, I got power over it, and anything over the earth, I have it. I mean, it sounds like a good thing. He said, go, therefore. Therefore, since I've empowered, since there I, I'm controlling things, that you understand I have authority in heaven and earth. He said, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. He said, in teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. And behold, I'm with you to the end of the age. Let me tell you what Jesus said. I'm ever going to be with you. You know what he said? Go. You know what the church said? You know what the church? Well, if the Lord wanted me to put it across my path. Well, Lord, I'm going to be here sitting on this chair at Walmart waiting on. Well, let me tell you what. You can sit there at Walmart. They will pass by. They will come and may be sin. But let me tell you, he tells us to go. That means get up from out of your environment. Get up out of your thermostatic controlled life. Oh, we let the kids. Oh, I had, oh, y'all pray for us. We had grandkids for two days. <laughs> two of them. Totally different temperaments. Had two different, two different. And after a while, I loaned them my remote. It's over. When King Jerry loans you the remote, he means momentarily. He don't mean for you to take it and keep it the rest of the night. I just want to let y'all know. Hmm. And you know what? They, they're used to having things their way. You're going to go into the world that's used to having things their way. You can go into the world and people want to put it on the channel they want. Can y'all say Amen. He said, but the Father, he said, teach him. He said, he said, that I have commanded you. Now, we've been doing the commandments on Wednesday. And when you say the commandments of Jesus, some people's eyebrows get working up and down. Well, you can call them suggestions, and I'm okay with you calling them suggestions. But Jesus said, go do what I've commanded you to do. You know, that's what a lot of problems in the church, we don't take it as a command. We take it as, as Parker's job. Excuse me, the evangelist Hamilton's job. Whoa. That makes me want to put another hundred in it. Name I'm tell you for sure. Ain't me. Woo. Let me tell you, sometimes we think that's somebody else's job. Sometimes we think that's the preacher's job. You know, they went to had the food blessed, and they were blessed, got ready to bless the food. True story. And the pastor looks at it and said, Brother so and so, he said, Would you bless the food? And he stood up, he said, Preacher, that's what we pay you for. So he was in the cahoots that everybody in the place didn't pray. Everybody in the house wasn't doing anything if the preacher was doing it. You got the wrong idea. If you, can some, you understand what I'm saying? Amen. You know, he wants us to go about the Father's business. You know, and, 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 you know, and when you have evangelism and you have people getting involved, some people just like trailers. You got to hook them up. They'll go with you, but you got to hook them up. We're going to give you opportunity here at CC Church for us to hook up and see souls win. Amen. There's nothing wrong being a trailer. If I got to pull you, let me know what your hitch is. Amen. You were a two or a one and a half. It don't matter. Amen. We'll pull you. Amen. Amen. And that's okay. I'd go, but I don't know where to go. Let me tell you what. A trailer does not know where to go. Woo. I said a trailer does not know where to go. But when it gets hooked up to the power, it'll follow. I said it'll follow. And then the front's got navigation. And the front knows where it's going. And the front knows what's happening. Come on. So you, you can be part, amen. You know, that, that a, cho, a soul winning church got to go. Look in uh, Mark 16. I know these are basic things. You hear somebody say, I've heard them scriptures all my life. Look at me real quick and I'll be mean to you for about three seconds. You read it, know what it says, but you ain't done much about it. Look at your neighbor and said, neighbor, I love that man. <laughs> I know some of you lied. And we'll pray for you. <laughs> I know some of you tried. My grandfather said nothing to be to try. And he said unto them, he's talking about his disciples. And I've heard people, I've heard people say out there, that was the 12. 
No, it wasn't the 12. It was the believers. Amen. He's speaking to us. Now, the rest of that power stuff you want too, don't you? He said, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel, the good news to the whole creation. And whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whew. But whosoever does not believe, he is condemned. That's it. Damned already is the translation. He's telling me, he said, if you believe now. See, the church is equipped. It's not on us to save people. Can somebody say amen? It said they that baptize and the one that believe, they get they in charge of themselves. So we're not in charge of that. Can somebody say amen? He said, and the, he says in the 17, and these signs will accompany those, accompany those that believe. That in my name, they might cast out devils. It, they, what? Woo! One translation is shall, I like that. It will cast out demons, and they will speak with new tongues, and they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Can somebody say it? This is good stuff. That, but let me tell you, we live in a world that's not looking for sick people. We're looking at living in a world that's not looking for people who are broken, disheartened, and blind, and unkept. They're not looking for them. Amen. Amen. But Jesus is. He said, you go into the world. He gave, he gave a, a, a bid for a supper. And Lot would not come. Made excuses. Many made excuses. But you know what? He said, go out in the highways and the byways and compel. Them. He said, go get the halted and the blind. Go out and get people. Let me tell you, you can be crippledly spiritual and crippledly blind. You can have all these things. Come on. Everybody is a potential for the kingdom of God. Now, not everywhere you go. Not every church you go is everybody a potential member of that church. But the true and living church whom Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords, the one in whom heaven brought to earth to manifest in our life, all people are candidates for salvation. Can y'all say amen? amen? So we got tools. He said, what should be happening? He said, should be happening casting out devils. You know why you have so many clashing personalities? Devils. I know some people don't think you can have them. When you're acting out and you just don't know what come over you, call me. Call me. We'll talk about it. You know what he said? He, he said that go. He said go. And, and you go out into the world and you proclaim the gospel. He said he that believes gets saved and he that don't believe. Amen. Now he didn't say he that's doctrinated. He didn't say he that looks like you. He didn't say he that sounds like you. Well. Then he said, pick it up serpents, amen. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think he's talking about that. <laughs> you know what he's talking about? Works of the enemy, you'd be able to just move them out of your way. You know what he's talking about? You know what he's addressing? He's addressing to us that we all have an innate fear of serpents. Most people do. Had a, had a guy up next to the church, they had an iron no iron junkyard, what's going on? Oh, it's salvage yard now. Ain't no junk. It's all salvage now. <laughs> yeah, hey, you're going to get better than that. You're going to see them salvaging a whole lot of things in America. Yeah. Well, anyway, we want to. And he came in there and he asked, he said, you got any pipe about that big, about that long? He said, yeah. He said, back over there. He said, there's some laying there. He said, I don't have time to go dig it out. He said, but if you want it, you can have it. He looked at him. He said, well, is there any snakes in there? He said, yeah, we see a few snakes in here. He said, well, I'm scared of five kind of snakes. He said, big ones, little ones, live ones, dead ones, and sticks that look like them. <laughs> How many of you ever been scared to see a stick? You? It's a belt laying there. <laughs> What's the deal? We innately have a fear of snakes. We innately... Or it seems like we're out of our, our, our environment. From us. Something, something's going on. And then we do that. You know what he's trying to tell you? Is that stuff there you shouldn't be scared of. Things that you're used to being scared of. Things that you innately just. He said you'll have power over them. You'll be able to move them. And if you get a hold of the wrong doctrine it won't kill you. If you eat anything or drink anything. That's off we'll be okay. Can you say amen? Now some people get in the bad doctrine. They drink it and eat it until they get the belly ache. And they don't understand what's going on. <laughs> But you know what he's trying to say? That that stuff won't hurt you. You know, sometimes people work. <laughs> now listen, here it comes from heaven. You ready? Here it comes from heaven. I don't get downloads. I just get spoke to. I don't, big ministries get downloads. I just get spoke to. 
You see what the difference is? Is that whenever we begin to trust him, we'll find out that nature has to change. And the whole world has to change because the King of kings and the Lord of lords is in charge. And it changes wherever we go and whenever we go. Move them out. Who would want to handle one? Well, one that's harmless. One that can't hurt me. Come on. You see, what we do, we worry about too much what the enemy is. I've heard people, I've heard people say, oh, don't talk bad. Oh, you'll get the devil stirred up. Not worried about getting the devil stirred up. He's wrath. His time. He knows it's short. He's already having a bad day. Yeah, amen. Ain't nothing you can do to get him going any stronger. Amen. Right. He's for it. Amen. You know, John 20 and 21, Jesus again said to them, peace be unto you. And as the Father sent me, I also am sending you. Man, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good reason to go. Can you say amen? Now I'm talking about going to Walmart. I'm talking about going to Target. Come on. I went to I went to McDonald's and I went there and we got some chicken nuggets. And I asked that girl, I said, is them back legs or front legs? She went to get a manager. I pulled up to the window and there's the manager. She's going. She knows, who's, she knows who's here. Amen. He said, I've sent you. He said, and, and, and when he, he thus said, he breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit. He said, if you forgive sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness of any, it is withheld. Now, what does that mean? Now, that don't mean becoming the Pope. That don't mean becoming Father Jerry. Does that, I don't even have a ring to it like I'm like, Father Gerald, I won't do it. Father Joseph. I'm like, that one might work one rainy day. Father Joseph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, what he wants you to do is go. He wants you to move is go. He wants you to, to, to be involved. You know what we want? We want somebody else to do it. Uh-oh. You know, he, he said... Receive Now, you got to understand that it's not about being the Pope. It's not about what is that thing. How do I understand if they're forgiven or not forgiven? What would give the, what would give the apostles that kind of power outside of Jesus telling them? What would they gauge that with? What would they measure that to? What could they say if it is or not? The gospel, the word of God. That's how you get saved. That's how repentance comes. That's how grace comes. It comes because he told me to forgive them. No matter what they do, they, your enemy mistreats you. He tells us to forgive them and love them, does he not? He said, now, this here, he said, forgive, you do that. It means to come into order of it. It means to come into order of the teaching of Christ. That's what we need. We do not need a church doctrine. We need a Bible doctrine of the scriptures of what Jesus said. We need what the word of God says. Can you say amen? Well, you know, we believe in these modern times. Let me tell you, modern times are going to pass and go to hell with the rest of it. What we need to do is go ahead and push on, and it may not be too fancy. It may not be too good. Let me tell you what. It scares me uh, of just seeker-friendly churches. You know, they go out there. They don't want anybody to say anything about sin. Let me tell you, come here. We're going to talk about it. So we don't want to talk anything. We don't talk about uh, sexual immorality. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about whatever. We need to talk about what the scriptures talk about. But our joy, our presence, our mission should not be on one group of people to hack them up and beat them up and make us look good. Well, yeah. You see what we did? How many of y'all know God loves them just like they are? God loves them. They're in sin. He doesn't love the sin, but he loves the sinner. He loves him. The church needs to be a place of, of good news. The church needs to be a place that, that, that whenever we go out, that we're working for him, we've been sent with him. Come on. And quit being, you know, some Christians are, are kind of like light switches. Oh, you go on, you go off. No matter who switches you. No matter who pat. Well, thank God for lights. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That sometimes we allow people and situations to turn us off or turn us on. You need to go ahead and push in no matter what it is. No matter what people are doing. Can you say, now, now my, my question, I've got several points for the church. we just go in here. We're just we're not going to get far. But let me tell you what. Can the church help people get saved? I said, can the church help people get saved? Oh, you ought to say it loud. Can the church help people get saved? Amen. Yes, he can. He wants to use you. 
We can help people get saved. It's not my job to save them. It's his job to do work. It's his way to do it. Then let me tell you what. You can tell a story on some, to some people how to paint a house and they understand prep and getting house ready. Yeah, well, same with a vehicle, Brother Jose. Some people understand getting that vehicle ready. Let me tell you, paint's no good if the, if the preparation's not good on the vehicle. The painter can only be as good as what his prep is. Let me tell you, there's already one went before us that's done all the prep work. All we need to do is follow through and do what we're supposed to do and love them and know that we can be part of what he does. Amen. You know, I know you can't, get a, you can't save a person personally, but I know a man that can. Can you say amen? You know, we need to tell people about him. Tell people, you know, only Jesus himself can help people receive or accept salvation. I'm talking about the working of the Spirit. We tell the story, but it's up to them. You know, we, we must uh, have a love and a concern for lost people. You know what we've been guilty of? You know what we've been guilty of? Our four no more. Well, you might have five and nobody else survives. Or you might have six and don't worry about the tricks. I don't know, whatever goes with you. But let me tell you what, we, we worried just about our family. Somebody throw me a pen. That's what I like. All right, they didn't. It's our job to get people safe. It is. Thank you, brother. Hey, I'm asking for hundred dollar bills next week. That's what the guy said, you have not for your ass not. I said, yeah, but that sounds like a bum. Let's go forward. Amen. Mm-hmm. But we have, we have to, to be into that place that, that we concern and we care, and it's not just about us, but it's about somebody else, which brings me to number one. Y'all know we just get into number one? Is <laughs> the church is going to have to be a praying church. We're going to have to pray. I appreciate Sister Brendan and Brother Dom when he comes. I, I appreciate those that go and pray. I really, I really appreciate that. Man, I appreciate those that, that pray. I appreciate you that pray at home. I appreciate y'all that, that come here and get your hands up and pray. But we're going to be a, a very um, active church getting the job done. We're going to have to be a church that prays, listen to me, about something besides me. Something about besides my family. And my kids. Come on. You know what I always say? I've said this for years. You go get their kids and, and they'll come get your kids. I'm talking about for the good. But nothing can take the place of prayer. You can worry about it. You can get upset about it. You can do everything. You complain about it. A lot of people rather complain about it and, and have a bad day about it versus pray about it. How many of y'all know if we prayed about half the stuff we talked about that we would be in prayer quite a bit? Well, I guess that's just for me, I guess. Thank you. I'll write that down. You know, we know, know that, you know, what's what we really got to understand is that prayer manifests the power of God. Now, think about what that simple, simple statement that prayer manifests the power of God. Why would that? Because He wouldn't do something if we're not asking. It's not happening if we're not calling forth. It's not happening. If we're not there to see it manifest. Let me tell you what. I guarantee you. There's no missions. There's nobody getting saved. There's nobody in a closet over here where a believer's not getting anything done. But you can go to that same closet while somebody's putting the broom up. Now it's sad today you talk about being in the closet with somebody. It sounds bad. <laughs> but if a person go and bring the gospel, come on. There's an intent, you know. You know, and we know, you know, Romans 10 and 1 says this. Romans 10 and 1. He said, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God is that Israel, uh, for God, is, Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear record of them. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about establishing their own righteousness, have not, have not submitted themselves unto righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law, and for the righteousness there was of everyone that believes. You know what he's telling us? That, that, that Israel can be, it's no small thing 
to want to see this area get saved. Paul thought a nation could be saved. Now, this is just Israel's uh, wants why they didn't roll over. And a lot of Israel did believe. There's a lot of people did believe. But you know what Paul believed? Paul believed there's a possibility for a nation to be saved. If it's a possibility for a nation to be saved, that we can say this and we want that and we want to see this error. We want to see these things change. You know what it's going to start out with? Prayer. You know what he told him? He said that they had a zeal of God, but they didn't have it according to knowledge. They didn't. Know. It's a lot of people out there, church people, that believe they write with God because they do good things. Because they don't do this and they don't do that. Let me say, just because you don't do that just means you're not doing this. It don't mean anything. Does it bring the flesh under? That's a good thing. I think. But I'm telling you, that's not, that's not a gauge that God's in. His son is the gauge. He said they being ignorant of God's righteousness, you know, and establish their own. We live in a world of self-established righteousness, and we have to push through it. We have to go on and do it. You're going to meet some people who think they're okay and they're all right. Well, that's just where they are. You know, what we ought to do is, is understand, you know, he said Christ is the end of the law. It's not doing this that makes you right. It's what Jesus did. No, no more than standing on your head long enough is going to make the top of it flat. <laughs> I guess from birth if you stood there long enough. But you know what, what we need to do? What we need to do is believe a vision's bigger than us. Be a praying church and say this is what we're going to believe. We're going to believe for X amount of souls. We're going to, but you see, you got to get on board. You got to believe it. You got to pray. You got to, you got to believe that, that, that God's going to do something. Amen. And it'll change lives. Amen. Y'all got time? One more. Amen. And I'm going. Amen. And that's preach the word. I don't think we have a big problem with that here. But are you preaching the word where you go? Well, the preacher said something about, wait a minute. Now back up with something about. <laughs> Let's find out what was said. Come on. Let's lift it up. Let's work with what we got. You know, you can, work, you can go home and break John 3.16 down and just work with that, and you can get a lot done with just John 3.16. God so loved. Not me. Not people. Not religion. But God so loved. Not, not, not me. Amen. That he loved. Now, he didn't like. He, he, he didn't just uh, think he was okay. He, he didn't have a warm feeling. He said, but God so loved. The, the creator of the universe, the one that holds all things that he loved, that he gave. You know, you can preach that. How many of you know y'all can preach that? You ever give anything precious? He gave the very, he bankrupt heaven to give us Jesus. You know, we, we got to act like it's something too. We got to get out there and talk about it. You, you don't have to have a whole lot of stuff. I understand that maybe not going to the mission field is your thing, but let, three, let 316 ring in our hearts and our lives and speak it out. Oh, it's not me. It's him. If without him, I... I'd be in trouble. It's sad, but it's true. We live in a world that needs Jesus, but you know, we live in that same world that belittles Jesus, belittles the gospel. And, and, and the evangelist was correct that, that, that they think, come on, it's the foolishness of preaching the gospel. We're going to go do it. Amen. Well, it makes good sense to me. Look, let me tell you what. I've been sent to do things that didn't make good sense, but I did what I was supposed to, and I was obedient, and I stand here today. Amen. You know, we're living in a generation of, of, of sermonettes and puppetettes and two-minute sermons and online and draw a bread basket scripture out and they read that and they're good for the week. They're not good for the week. They're perishing, don't even know it. Living in a world that's beating them up. Come on. But what we got to do is have the gospel and have the good news. And the gospel must be preached not only in word and demonstration, but power that, that we believe God saves people. He's our protection. He keeps us. I'm telling you, church, we're coming into a time that we're going to need to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit of what to do, what to say, where to go. We're going to be dependent upon the Spirit of God. Say, use me, Father, I'll go. Amen. Send me. Man, if it's just there, just to confirm. Come on. You know, it's not only the ministry's job to preach the gospel. Is the body of Christ's job. You know, that's the funny thing about it. That once we're in, some people just, you know, think we're in and that's the end of it. You have begun your journey. And what we need to say is, is believe what the Word of says. Now, here in 2 Timothy, and I'm going, 2 Timothy 
4. And we say this to commission our evangelists, but he's also commissioned the church. He's also uh, telling Timothy something to reach people. Now, if you want to reach people, the best way to reach them is through the Word of God and through the Spirit of God. Listen, we were talking about, a friend of mine was on the phone, and we were talking about the concept of people. Let me tell you, if you already know the come out for you going over there, ain't no use you to go. But if you say, but they're not going to listen to me, or, or, or it's no, look, don't even go. But you got to believe that, that, and you got to go with it with the with the belief in the, that it's going to be God in charge, not me. It's going to be God sending me, not me. It's His commandment for me to go. He said to go into the highways, the byways. He said, up and "Get up and be a church. Come on, better get up and go. We need to be a church of prayer and a church of the Word of God, preaching the Word. You go to a certain place, they they blowing up big. They got light shows, got light shows. Nobody getting their feelings hurt." They don't speak against beating your wife. They don't speak against uh, uh, doing the same and cutting your husband up when he ain't around. He has character assassination. and see, They don't speak those things over there. It's the truth, church. A feel-good gospel. And the truth is that, that people are dying and perishing, and we sitting here nodding our head. Well, well, I don't know. I'll be back next week. <laughs> I don't know. They ain't even filled the schedule out next week. So y'all got hope me not being here. So come on back on Sunday. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. He said, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. That's that thing we need to be preaching about. We need to be talking about that kingdom. He said, I charge you. You know, he but tell him to do something. He, don't that sound like, doesn't that sound like there's some urgency to it? Some urgency. He said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, rebuke, rebuke, reprove, reprove or rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, you ought to be saying something. You ought to be out there. You know what we did? Well, you know, that's them. I can't control them. I got you. I got you. But that doesn't make it, that doesn't make it okay. I said it doesn't make it okay. You know what he said? He said, in season now. So he made, when you, you know what we ought to do? We ought to be ready to lift up Jesus no matter where we go and no matter what we're doing. It's like a friend of mine way back in the day he used to have to hunt a prophet down. <laughs> I guess we just didn't know how to raise him up. Had to hunt a prophet down. He took this girl and had a, needed a word for her life and went and seen this, this uh, uh, prophet, went and seen him. He had an old straw hat on. His shirt was open. His sleeves was cut out of it. A pair of short pants and and, uh, and a pair of uh, sandals, what you call them? We call them flip-flops. We call them flip-flops, sandals. My mama had a thong. She'd take it off and beat us with it, you know. <laughs> that was a shoe. <laughs> Scare some people, amen. But you know what we got to do is, is come to that place to get out and do it. And, and some things need rebuking. Some things are approved. We need to talk about that's the right way to go. You need to exhort people. You need to be long-suffering. Well, if we don't get it right now, instant, some of us are not wanting it. He said, but preach the word. Be instant. Be ready. He said, no matter what's going on. You know, he said, for time will come. How many of y'all believe the time is coming? For time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And now's the time to go. Now, now get her going. Go do it. Not endure sound doctrine. They, they don't want it. You're right. They don't want sound doctrine. They don't want it in. Well, that's for y'all, but I don't think the Lord. No, wait a minute. Me and the Lord got our own thing going. You, yeah, you're a freak. I heard my pastor call somebody a freak. Yeah, from the pulpit. There is no individuality. It is the body of Christ that is a many-membered body, and you are one. And can you say amen? And, you can't, and I can't say I don't need them. They can't say they don't need us. Amen. He said, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You know what that means? That means in the last day you can go somewhere where people say it just like you do. You can go somewhere in the last days that they'll say it and whatever you're into, whatever sin you're in, whatever thing you're in, whatever change you don't want to be in, that there will be people to tickle your ears. There will be people that said that's old style. 
The Bible didn't know what it was talking about when it talked about that lifestyle. The Bible didn't know what it was. We're living in the modern time. It's new family. No, there's only one family, man, and male, and female. You go read when they got on the ark. He just did got male and female. That's all they got on there, male and female. I'm not confused about that. Had somebody freaked out. Little boy put on a pair of slippers to go get the mail. Oh, don't let him put on mail. That's what. I said, wait a minute. Now, if that boy's not strong enough to go to that mailbox in a pair of girl slippers and come back and be okay, we failed. I said, we failed if a pair of slippers are turning a little boy around. We need to have our doctor, men are men. There's fathers and there's sons. There's great sons. You know why a lot of men that turn away and want men is they never had a man in their life. Or they had a man that did not love in their life. Could not love in their life. Refused to love in their life. And brought grief. Oftentimes. And they have a strong mother. Well, they might well be like somebody that loves me. Come on. Y'all tell me we don't need Jesus. You tell me that we don't need the gospel. That they'll be like somebody that loves them. And if something happens in the spirit world, church, if something happens, what we got to do is rebuke and exhort and long-suffering the doctrine. Listen, you know what long-suffering means? It means it's not automatic. We went down there. We went down there for two weeks. We've been praying back there for a month, nothing happened. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Have long-suffering. Now, they never said that. But I'm telling you, some won't go pray because they've had such things. Rebuke. Come on, you, you, there's some things you got to stand up. That's just not right. You got to reprove it. That means you got to check it out and make sure if it's the real deal. Exhort. Say something good. With all long life, not some, but all long suffering and doctrine. Now, what does that say? With your exhortation, your rebuking, and all that you're doing, you should have doctrinal backup. Or a doctrinal reason called scripture as why we believe these things, why we exhort, why, why we rebuke. Come on. Why we establish because we have doctrine. For the time will come, but they will not endure sound doctrine, but go after their own lust. And they shall have to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Now, this is not people that's never heard it. This is people that's heard it. See, but you got a pastor going to go ahead and call it out. you got a pastor. Listen to me. Yes, the Holy Spirit is so good. I love him. Just because I say some of these things and your kids is in it and people is in it don't mean we don't love them or don't care about them. We say it because we do love them and because we do care about them. That's the devil whisper to you. I'm not going to bring him over there. They might say something. You better bring him here and hope we do say something. My goodness. Hmm. For they have turned their ears from the truth. <laughs> and shall be turned to fables. <laughs> you know, we live in a time today that superheroes are so cool. You got superheroes everywhere. They do everything. I mean, that, that, that people, the, come on. Let me tell you what, Jesus is not looking for a superhero. He is, he is the hero. He is the deliverer. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. That we don't have to turn to fables. We don't have to turn to things. You know what they did? They just started doing it. Well, if you know, if you rub it on his head and turn it over, let me tell you, you get a pet rock. And you can pet it, flip it over, and you come tonight, and it'll still be where you left it. So millions of them things. Guy couldn't get enough rocks out of the brook to sell people because they want them for a couple of dollars, pet rock. How many of y'all had one? Let's get a little honesty. Who had the pet rock? Oh, there's, oh my goodness. <laughs> now, I'm going to preach on line next week. <laughs> Sister, did you have a pet rock? You don't think so? Right, now, if Sister Stephanie didn't have a pet rock, I'm going to let the rest of y'all off because me had a pet rock. And I was hoping for backup with Sister. How about a Gia pet? A Gia pet, that's close enough. But, you know, people turn to things instead of him. 
What, what, what does that have to do with anything? Look at, because you know what it is? It's fatty. People like things with a fad in them. People like that. People like something that everybody else gets. Let me tell you about my, let me tell you if you're a trender. You got any trenders in here? You're always behind the trend. <laughs> if you're a trender. Because the trend changed before you really get one. It changed before you can pay for it off your credit card. Uh-oh. Said, how do you know that? Here we go. How many of y'all believe that, that the power of the gospel changed people and changed things? And the body of Christ got to be willing to go. We are equipped to go. We've been sent to go. We, we got to be a preaching church. We got to be a, a church that, that prays. We got to be a church to believe. And, and you got to endure and hold on. It, it's nothing. Uh, soup. We're just in an instant generation. People want it right now. Instant. Want it right now. Man, I tell you what, I didn't get that flying car, but I am down for the next teleporter. Amen. <laughs> I am down for that. Amen. Won't you stand with me this morning? How many of y'all want to be a people to reach the Lord? Amen. I'm excited about Wednesday night. We're going to have good church. We're going to, uh, the, uh, uh, the evangelist is going to come and share with us. And I'm looking forward. Amen. To hearing some things. I, 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 when I, I seen Brother Parker come, a.k.a. Brother Hamilton. I seen him come this morning. I seen his share. I seen his shoulder squared back. I seen him walking like that. I seen him go there and I seen him change. Isn't that good? You see, well, you, you go do them and God will do you. You go get it concerned about them. Let me tell you, God's already concerned about you. But sometimes we got to see the manifestation of others that we know that that's just as good and for me. And I see my big little brother. I see him see some confidence in him. Man. He's still working. He's still changing people. Let me tell you, you don't worry about your past. You worry about your future. There's nothing that in the past you can change. That's a trick of the devil. He always wants you to try to fix something back. You can't do it. He never tells me, you're going to cut up Sunday. You need to, you need to cut up bigger. Or bigger. He don't ever do that to me. Why? Because he does not hold my future, and he does not know where I go. He does not know what I do. He does not. Come on. Not like that. He's not in control of my life. But we need to be a church, man. I mean, we won't be, I'm listening. God, do this today. I said, how many of y'all uh, take some special prayer time this week and pray for souls? Let me give, give me a hand. Give me a hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, eight, twenty. Oh, man, that's 20 some. That's 20 some. Got two hands in the back. So she's surely willing to pray double. Amen. She got a foot up, too. She, amen. And this week, listen to me. Oh, oh, might as well send them, sister. Might as well send them. I want you to pray this week. And I want you to read scripture on soul winning. So how you did? Well, you heard three or four this morning just going there trying to practice that. Going there and said, okay, I'll go. There, listen to me. Call <laughs> Jesus out on his word. You said, I'll, you said go. Now I'm going to go. Now you you say now get through with it. Now you don't say where you want to go. Don't say who you want, where you want to be, when what kind of people you want. No matter the race, no matter the size, no matter who they are, and say send me and see what happens. Some of you can, ooh, some of you can't minister to some people because they don't look like you. Well, I'm about through. <laughs> I'm about through, and that's about all y'all can handle. But I'm gonna take through. Church, are we gonna do it? We're going to have to be a strong church in these last days. We're going to have to be care. We're going to have to care about souls. We're going to have to get and, and get in there and be part of. Amen. What He's doing. Amen. Father, I just come to you in Jesus' name, and Father, we just know, Father, that that you have a plan for us, Lord God, and that plan is just not about us, Father God, but it's about your plan. It's about your Son. It's about going, Father God, where no one's been sent. Father, I thank you for sending me where those they've messed up, Lord, where they've muddied the water, Father. But I thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit to clear things up, Lord. And those in doctrinal error, Lord God, who did just be simply straightened, Lord, with the truth. And Father, I know that you love the person more than the error. And today, Father God, we just speak souls in the kingdom. We just thank you, Father, for just bringing Brother Parker here and in our presence, Lord, and safely, Lord God. And the little hiccups, Lord God, that, that may have just caused some men to never go, want to go, Father. Just stirred him to go. 
I just speak a blessing on him and his family, his wife, Father God. Touch him, Lord God, just the hundreds and hundreds over, Lord, what they do. And we just thank you for that. And today, Father God, we just ask you to cause us to be good soldiers, Lord, and that we'll endure, Father God. And we know sometimes it's long suffering. We've got to wait out, Father, see what you do. But we know, Father God, with Christ, our Father, our Son, your Son, Father God, that we'll never fail. And today, Lord, we speak for kingdom, kingdom moving, Lord, in the earth, Father God. Lives being changed. The church coming together, Father God, in a greater way. We love you this day. We ask you to touch the people, Lord. Give us safe arrivals. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Tell somebody you love them and hug two nicks. If you need prayer, you can come down. <laughs>